I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Neil Samani, the founder of Eclipse. Neil, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, I would love to dive into everything Eclipse is working on, on app chains and development of dApps, which I think is absolutely necessary for people to be able to use dApps. We need to be able to build them efficiently and, and safely and securely, more importantly. Um, and I would love to just start off our conversation with hearing a little bit about your background and what led you to starting Eclipse, and then, then we'll dive into all the details. Yeah, totally. So my background's in engineering. I was a software engineer at Airbnb. Uh, I worked at Citadel as a quantitative researcher in the commodities group, doing things like power or gas, not directly related, related to crypto, but there are some like interesting overlaps, especially now that people are talking about frequent batch auctions and all sorts of market structures. Uh, in March, I quit. I started something in Terra. I was building an EVM. It was going great at first, and then uh, Terra depegged. So I scrapped that project, and uh, now I'm working on something that I think is much more exciting. These uh, very like trust-minimized Solana VM rollups, where you could deploy it to any chain for security. Very cool. Okay, and I would love to dive into that more. Um, so obviously, you learned a lot in your first bout there with, with Terra. Um, maybe you can explain somebody who... You know, they're not a developer um, and they've used a few DeFi apps. They're interested in learning out how the system works. How would you explain what Eclipse does to them? Yeah, so the first thing to start with is how we run programs. And we borrow that from Solana itself. So we use the Solana virtual machine, meaning that if you have a Solana application, you can deploy it directly to Eclipse and it runs as you intended. But then the second part is how we get security. And we basically throw away the consensus part of Solana, which is the part that typically makes blockchain secure. And that requires most of the nodes to be honest. But for us, we want to relax that assumption. We're basically saying only a minority of the nodes on your network need to be honest and reliable. So the advantage of doing that is that when you're running a blockchain for yourself, usually if you want Solana scale speed, then you also have to maintain the liveness of this network, you have to maintain security. But instead, we have this protocol that interacts with L1s in a very generic way to build this customizable rollup where, uh, let's say you produce a block of transactions on our Solana or Eclipse VM, that'll get posted to Ethereum, or it can get posted to Celestia or some other data availability layer, which you'll use for data storage and security. Okay. And I want to break this down a little bit more because it is quite a bit technical for people who are not developers and don't understand the back end of, of applications. But from, from what I understand, you know, usually when you run an application or you're verifying transactions in a DAP, you have to go through all the nodes and you're, you're, you're finding a way to make it faster but still secure, um, which is needed, I'm guessing, for the sort of mainstream adoption and scalability. Yeah, so like at a high level, the way that rollups typically work is there's two options. Uh, you either have optimistic settlement or zero knowledge settlement. And in the optimistic case, you basically let the execution node or the sequencer run a bunch of transactions, produce a block and say, this is the final result. And then uh, you just accept it, pretend like it's true. And if and anyone can watch that, uh, that sequence of transactions, and if they think it's false, they can contest it. And if they're right, then they get paid a big sum and the person who proposed the false block loses a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. So that's an optimistic rollup. In the zero knowledge direction, you can generate a proof that the trace of the transaction or the program that you ran is provably correct. Mm -hmm. And you can basically provide some strong evidence that you executed the program correctly. So that we're starting as an optimistic rollup and we'll become a zero knowledge rollup in the long run. And we most, I guess there, there's another like technical distinction here, which is that uh, usually settlement is do done on an L1. So like for an Ethereum rollup, there's actually a smart contract for like optimism, for example, and that does that computation to verify whether um, like a transaction was executed incorrectly in the case of that, uh, of, in the case that someone challenges it. But for us, we have an honest, we have a settlement layer, and that's the layer that's responsible for doing that sort of like reasoning and figuring out whether a transaction was executed right. Okay. And your, you know, your first... Uh, project was in the Terra ecosystem, and 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 now this is related to Solana. Uh, do the applications that you work with they only work on the Solana blockchain, or you know it seems like we're growing into sort of a multi-chain future? And obviously, there's a lot of applications running on Ethereum as well. Yeah, so we're not going to support Ethereum programs to run on our chain. Uh, just because we only want to double down on these high throughput applications, like things where the throughput is either necessary or there's some reason for them to be building on Solana. 
Uh, we're also going to support the movie VM in the, in the long term. So we're going to borrow from Aptos and Sui and use that same virtual machine in our architecture. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long have you and your team been working on this and, and what stage is it at right now? Yeah, so uh, the Terra project was scrapped in May. Uh, I took like a month to just sort of think about what the future of blockchain architectures would look like and chatted with the Celestia folks a lot. And we started working on this idea in the, let's say like the middle of June, but July is when this sort of final form took. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And are, are there already applications that are, are using the technology? Is it, is it really being able to build that quickly or at, at what stage is, is the development of Eflips at? Yeah, so we're going to have a public testnet available in January, but for a few select teams who have reached out really early, if they're building really exciting consumer applications, then we've given them some early access. The, the kinds of stuff that I want to see is consumer applications where crypto is at the core of it, and there's it's, like, it's, it's impossible to remove the crypto element without just completely destroying the application. Because I, I feel like right now we're at a point where if something could be built without crypto, it probably should be. So we want to see stuff where you're either removing a trusted third party that just cannot be trusted. Maybe you're encouraging cooperation in a way that's not possible in Web2. Or you're like playing with identity in a way to prevent embarrassment or fraud for the user. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And all this kind of technology, it really sounds like it's all on the back end. You know, would end users that are using ADAP know any different whether you know, Eclipse is being used or not? So their, their interface will be a Solana wallet, so they can actually use all the same technology that they use with Solana normally. But uh, yeah, they actually wouldn't know where the security is coming from. That's all done behind the scenes. For a sophisticated user, if they want to see what's the status of a transaction after they've sent it, they'll notice that multiple blockchains are listed. Uh, there'll be the, uh, the Eclipse chain, so our actual sequencer. There'll be the chain that we get security from, and that'll have some sort of time period where the block is actually finalized. And then there'll be a third thing for settlement, which is like, oh, in two weeks, this transaction will actually be finalized in the case of the optimistic rollup. Mm -hmm. Okay. And obviously, the, the security aspect is important. Um, from what I understand, you know, just a Solana application by itself is sort of backed on the security of the Solana consensus and, and the blockchain, and, and hopefully that's secure enough. Um, does using Eclipse sacrifice any security or make it different security wise from running you know uh any other DeFi apps which obviously we're still seeing a lot of hacks here and there in in DeFi. that's a very important aspect when you're running an application especially when there's funds locked into it yeah i mean the security assumption that's changing is basically now you can rely on the security of ethereum but run solana code and get solana speed or you can swap out ethereum for any other game so that, that's the big deal. It's like a customizable rollup where you pick who you're trusting rather than being tied to the same chain as a virtual machine that you're using. Because typically, if you're like an EVM rollup, you're running on Ethereum. Or if most people would expect if you're a Solana rollup, then you're getting security from Solana. Mm -hmm. But in this case, we're allowing you to mix and match it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's pretty cool. And, and you mentioned there, there was one other blockchain e ecosystem, um, you know, sort of, sort of forward looking. Do you expect... Uh, a lot, a lot of. Uh, I haven't followed the growth of like development on, on Solana, but are you seeing that as towards this next bull run, um, and just in general, more developers moving to Solana that will be, will be able to take advantage of your technology? Yeah, I think that in the future we're going to see a lot more app chains uh, and a lot more trust minimized app chains in particular. So like, I'm a huge Celestia bull. Celestia is the um, the folks that we iterated with very early on, and we're using them for data availability or to store these blocks as a first step. Uh, and I, I think that we're going to start seeing more applications that can only be built with that kind of architecture, where you could really blow up the chain, use all the throughput for yourself, like a fully on-chain game, for example. Or maybe uh, there are all these critiques about Google search being censored or uh, Twitter recommendation algorithm being like falsified or being like affecting the recommendations. So we, that'd be a great candidate to decentralize. It just requires so much throughput to run a full machine learning model on-chain. But uh, if you have your own chain, then it becomes more feasible. Definitely. And I'd love if you could dive a little bit deeper into, you know, sort of the traditional Ethereum DAP that's sort of backing on the, the layer one protocol versus an app chain. And is it actually its own blockchain or you know, how much of it is sort of running on the layer one? And, and what is the main difference? Yeah. So usually for like, uh, like Ethereum or for Solana, you have the same node that runs the program. They propagate the result to all of the other nodes of the network. 
all those other nodes will also execute what uh, what that main node did, and as a, and they'll all come to some sort of consensus on what the final result is. So in our case, we've broken up a lot of these pieces. Oh, and then, and then they have to store the result, right? They have to maybe like a few days later, someone requests, well, hey, what was the status of that transaction? Then they need to be able to retrieve that. So we've broken it up. So the person who executes the transaction is not the same one who is verifying that the tra transaction was executed correctly. And they're also not the same one to store the data at the end of the day. So these are like three different functions, consensus, execution, and data availability. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks for that. And when there are you know, developers that are building dApps on, on Solana, for example, uh, and they go to Eclipse to, to use your solutions, you know, how easy is it for onboarding and integration um, or existing apps as well that are already built you know, to be able to move into Eclipse? Uh, they should actually be able to use the same exact CLI. So they can just point their command line interface to our network and they can deploy it as usual. So it, it should be seamless. In the long run, we're going to have our own CLI though, and that's going to be necessary when people want to configure their app roll up in a more specific way. Maybe they want to specify the number of sequencers, they want to have some sort of like memory or cores requirements, and we'll actually offer some sort of fee market for interchain security to decentralize the sequencer in the long run. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are the main sort of uh, objectives that you and your team need to, w that are working on right now in, in Eclipse? Um, on the way to the, the public test net? Yeah, right now, I think that the business development side is really interesting to me. So getting these core sources of like weird, unseen consumer use cases where crypto is at the core, I've been working with a lot of our university partnerships to see if these students have some bright ideas, um, and then getting like major partnerships outside of Web3 and growing the pie. So that's the BD side. On the engineering side, uh, the test net plan is pretty straightforward. Moving forward after that, it gets really complicated because we have to sort of set up the orchestration in order for people to spin up their own app specific rollup. Initially, we're only going to provide one. It's going to be a shared app rollup, which the Eclipse team runs ourselves, similar to Optimism. Uh, but in the long run, people will be able to spin up their own chains. Mm -hmm. Okay. And based on your you know, expertise and insights into the growth of dApps uh, on, on Solana and in general, are you thinking that there's going to be a lot of DeFi and, and finance-based applications that are using this technology, uh, or are there other industry use cases, or you know, where do you see the, the, the category of, of what kind of dApps are going to be growing the most throughout this next run? Yeah, I mean, DeFi is okay. I think I'm tired of seeing DEXs and yield farms and all the same stuff. I, I want this more to be a blockchain for the most imaginative developers to build consumer applications that we haven't seen before. So I'm, I'm more focusing on that. Uh, and I think that the main reason why these great consumer applications haven't been seen is just they just don't have enough throughput. Mm -hmm. So now we, we're giving them the full Solana VM for themselves. And people will say that Solana is, um, is like big enough for any consumer application. But even Pith recently moved off. They were using like 10% of the, of the throughput on Solana. They made their own chain. Now they have to maintain the liveness of this network and they have to do all this other stuff, which they, they probably shouldn't be thinking about as an application developer. So that, that's a good opportunity to capture these folks who feel like they've maybe outgrown where Solana is at right now. And, and there actually is stuff in the Solana white paper about them horizontally scaling proof of history and things like that, but it hasn't been implemented right now. So th this is a really good solve for them in the short term. And then for applications that really need all this throughput, uh, it's, it's just a long-term fix. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a time when you know, there's a million active users and, and people that aren't really in Web3 sort of using these applications and sort of breaking out more into the mainstream. Yeah, Charlie. I think I'm a good candidate is something like um, a lot of these social networks that we've all had issues with, like Yelp, for example. Yelp has been censoring reviews, and they'll, if a restaurant pays them, there's rumors that they'll remove a bad, a bad review. So, and there's a tr and anyone in Yelp's position will will basically be trusted that they can't be doing that. But there's such a strong profit incentive that they might end up doing it anyway. The, at a certain point, you just have to decentralize it and remove the middleman. Mm -hmm. I used to really want to be Yelp elite, and, and now I don't even care because the quality's gone down so bad. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and for projects that are developing uh, in currently on, on other ecosystems and for startups that are trying to look to build dApps and, and app chains that are going to be you know, fast, scalable and secure, what's the best way for them to learn more about Eclipse and sort of follow along with your team's launch? First thing is follow our Twitter. Uh, it's Eclipse FND, so Eclipse Foundation. Uh, the, our website, we have a mailing list and we have a Discord. But I, I think the top thing is a Twitter because that's, I use Twitter personally the most. So I'll post everything on there. 
Sounds great, Neil. I will leave uh, your Twitter and the foundation's Twitter and, and the platform links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your insights into this. All the best with you know, growing uh, your project and I'm looking forward to seeing the public test net. Let's definitely follow up in the near future. Great, thank you.